Hi, I'm Mark Carey, and I hope that you'll follow me on many of my projects located at The Marcus Carey Perspective. I hope that if you like what you see here, you will subscribe below. You're not going to find a lot of videos. I took down about 10 years worth of videos because I've completely changed my attitude about life. And as a result, I'm now at a point in my life where I want to share content with people in a whole new way. So the past is gone, the future's ahead of us, and today we have the present. Hey, good morning, everybody. Mark Carey here from the Marcus Carey Perspective. Glad that you're with me again. I've got another issue I want to discuss with you about integrating my new Rodecaster Pro with the vMix console. And as I begin this program this morning, I want you to listen to the sound quality of what's coming out of the Rodecaster into the audio input on my vMix console. So I went to my add input and chose audio input. Then I had to choose what my input was going to be. And in the drop down menu, I chose the microphone to be Rodecaster Pro Multi-Channel. I muted that in my headphones, which is the recommended setting when you do this. After creating this input, it is now called Mark Audio. As you can see right now, and as you can hear, I'm outputting two channels to this input. The Rodecaster is sending two channels into this input. As you can see from my audio mixer, the audio input under Mark Audio is showing two channels and I am recording this video and outputting the master to the recording channel as well. One input, which is supposed to be just my microphone, is now going out on the master and it's going out to the recording. However, that's not the only thing that's coming in being my microphone. So if I send any signal from the computer to the roadcaster, which would come in through the USB channel, or I send any sound created in the roadcaster to the computer in vMix, it's all going to come in through the same input channel. Watch this. I will play some music from the sound pad. I'll mute my microphone, play the sound pad, and you'll see what I mean. All right, so what I demonstrated was that the music comes in through the same input because in reality, what is dubbed Mark Audio is not just my microphone. It is the entire output of the Rodecaster. And since I am recording all of my inputs because I have my audio turned on for Mark Audio, all of that is going to the master and all of that is going into recording. I want you to listen how terrible my sound is at this point before we make the changes that I discovered and I want to pass along to you. So if I go down to my audio input and hit the little gear wheel, I can bring up the settings for that input. In order to adjust the quality of my sound, I need to eliminate what is happening by bringing in two channels from Rodecaster into vMix and outputting two channels to the vMix master and to the recording. The problem is that by bringing in two channels, I'm getting a conflict. I'm getting a phaser effect. One channel is coming in. It's a mono channel. Another channel is coming in in a mono channel. They're competing with each other. They're suppressing the volume and they're making the quality go way down. So here's the fix for that. You go into your audio settings for your audio input. And in this case, the audio input is the Mark Audio. As you can see, the input is on this side. This is pre-processing. 
I've added some gain so you can see that the post-processing on this side is showing up as two channels. First thing you need to do is bring them in not as stereo channels because they're not stereo. It's a mono channel coming in on both sides and create into separate mono. When you do that, you'll see that you now have gain one and gain two. You have each of these two channels here that you can adjust. Not so worried about that yet, and here's why. We want to eliminate one of these channels. So we go to Channel Mixer, and we take the slider, whichever channel you, you like, one or two, and pull it all the way down. Now you can see in the meter that I still have two channels a voice coming in, but I've restricted what's going out to one side of that. In essence, according to according to this setting, this. Oh, by the way, I also always make sure my microphone, my headphones are turned off to prevent feedback, and I want to make sure that the tick mark is in the box visible in the mixer, so that this input will be visible to me and I can always access it from the audio mixer. So now. If I go back to my audio settings, you can see that in pre-processing, I have two channels coming in here. So now if we go back to the audio settings, you can see that I have two channels coming in on pre-processing, but only one going out on the other side. Now I have my gain set at 11 dB because as you can see, I'm not quite getting to negative 12 here. And the sweet spot is between negative three and negative six. Don't want to go any higher than that. It might do some peaking. I've played with this game. You can turn the one you're not using all the way down to zero. That won't hurt anything. It just so happens that I found in vMix that the delay in the audio in order to sync up with the video so that you don't have to do the syncing in post-production in Premiere or whatever your editing software is for my particular system with my particular camera and my computer and my hardware encoder, uh, I mean, my video encoder, uh, all of that works to me for 132 milliseconds. VMix has recommended kind of a standard of 80. Just for me, I found that this substantially reduces the amount of post-production work that I have to do to bring everything into sync. Now, if I close this and make that change, hopefully, hopefully, you will now be able to see, you will now be able to see a, or hear a significant difference in the quality of my audio. Now, if you can, we've solved the problem of that phaser effect of bringing in two channels. Here's one of the issues. VMix is a tremendous program, no doubt about it. I, I think it's the gold standard. The Roadmaster is the hottest new item out there for podcasters and people doing video editing. It's been discussed in that context multiple times. Many of the videos that you'll watch, you'll see guys actually recording to the SD card inside of the roadcaster or recording to a, a DAW, like Adobe Audition. They're then taking the audio that they recorded separately from the video and editing them together. Sometimes I've heard it said that it's a good idea to create an, uh, an audio input that pulls from your camera. That way the audio and the video come in in sync. And when it comes time to lining up the separately recorded audio with the audio recorded at the same time the video is recorded, it makes it easier. Put them on two separate tracks. You move them around until the sound doesn't seem to have any difference in it. And you delete or mute the one that's coming in from the camera. That's one way of doing it. I don't know that I want to try to record all my audio separately. I'm going to continue to experiment with this to see which is the better quality audio on the videos that I'm producing. But I want you to do me a big favor. It just I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to learn this myself. If there's anything I'm learning along the way that's of any help to you at all, by all means, use it. But I ask you to like the video. I'd ask you to subscribe to the channel and I'd ask you to comment below. I'm not saying that I've found all the answers. I'm just trying to chronicle for you the study and the preparation that I've been making in order to try to have a better quality product so that the other content I produce will look and sound as good as possible. 
And um, I'm certain that I'll make a lot of mistakes along the way, but I will tell you this, I'm going to work with you and anything I learn, I'm going to share with you. And all I'd expect in return is that you do the same. If you learn something new, add it to the comments. We might bring you on as a guest. We might have you share with us your videos and work it into a video series. And by all means, be sure to contact the folks at vMix and encourage them to upgrade their program so that it can receive the individual channels from Roadcaster's multi-channel output. And we can put each channel on its own input and not have these other issues to deal with. Thanks for watching. Hope that you'll subscribe. Stay with us and God bless.